Good afternoon. I'm ASTC Heller. This is how to properly do the backboarding skills sheet for the EMT school. To do the skill properly, you will need you'll need your PPE. You'll need a backboard, a patient with a spinal injury. You'll need a, a cervical collar, the uh, immobilization blocks, which are part of the backboard and should be included with the backboard and some sort of um, padding, like a t-shirt, I'm using some roller gauze, something to um, pad the voids with after, after you've secured your patient to the backboard. You'll also need a helper to help maintain C-spine while, uh, while you go through the rest of the process, and ideally you'll have a second helper to help you log roll your patient. So, as soon as you enter the scene, First things first, as with any as with any medical skill, um, BSI precautions. So I've got my gloves and I've got my glasses. That's kind of like the minimum minimum uh, BSI. So, ma'am, would you help hold a hold a C spine on this patient? Sir, sir, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. So conscious. First things I'm going to do is check his CSMs. So checking for pulse bilaterally. Sir, can you squeeze my fingers? Yep. He, I can feel him squeeze. And sir, can you feel this? Mm -hmm. Can you feel this? Mm -hmm. You want to do this for all four extremities. I'm checking for pedal pulses on the top of his feet. Simulating obviously. He has his boots on, but I don't want to smell his feet, so I told him to keep them on. Sir, can you press down? And I asked him to do that bilaterally one or not one at a time and sir can you feel this yeah can you feel this yeah okay csms on all four extremities are good sir can you give me a hand here sure i'm gonna head myself i'm gonna put on a cervical collar i'm gonna measure using my fingers from his trap to his, uh, his jawline or ear right here. I already have it sized appropriately. And you wanna get this on while moving your patient's head and neck as little as possible because remember you have suspected spinal injury. Very common point of failure on this skill, if you're coming to the EMT school, is not getting this down snugly right here. A lot of students will kind of do that right there. And it's just not, not tight and doesn't fit well. Is that too tight? Mm -mm. All right. So, sir, do you mind giving me a hand now? So we're gonna roll him onto the backboard. Crossing the legs is not required, but it does make it easier. So, sir, grab down here and grab up around his belt line. And I'm going to grab the fabric of his pants right here and I grab his shoulder. And on the head's count, we're going to roll him up towards us. On three, one, two, three. Check the posterior real quick. And again. On three, one, two, three. He's on the board, but not centered up. You can be, you can let go, sir. Thank you. And would you mind putting a foot on the foot of the board or holding it? That's a good trip to keep the board from sliding down. When you slide your patient down, it'll keep you from just from from the whole board moving. Down at the hips, on the head's count. On three, one, two, three. And up, but from the shoulders, but from the armpits, again. On, on three, one, two, three. Okay, you're good, sir. He looks like you sent it up pretty well. First thing I'm gonna secure is the chest strap. As you do this, you wanna ask your patient if they're conscious or 
something to pay attention to if they're unconscious is tell them to take a, take, take a deep breath, sir, take a deep breath. And now that he's got a full chest of air, using this push-pull method, and the snug the strap down should be snug but not tight. Okay? Torso first. That push-pull method ensures that you actually do a good job because another common point of failure is the straps are left loose or they're caught underneath the board. And if you very methodically tighten them, you will ensure that that doesn't happen. Still holding the C spine. Now, as I slide these blocks in, as I slide this one in, you'll remove this hand, leave that one there until I put the block on that side. Okay. Good. And you'll notice she's, even now, she's still holding C spine because these aren't actually secured yet. Snug, but not too tight. Okay, you can let go. I'm not almost done, but not quite done. I'm going to use my padding that I had earlier. And I'm going to pad any voids that might exist underneath his body for um, just for the patient's comfort, but it also helps a lot with the uh, help and maintain circulation. Use these straps, this isn't necessary, but it's nice. You can secure the arms. And the same with the feet. And last thing I do, now that I'm done with all the splinting and all the securing, reassess those CSMs. So feeling for a pulse, bilaterally, can you squeeze my fingers? Can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel this? Mm -hmm. Same down here. Feel for his pedal pulses. Start to press down. Okay. Good job. And can you feel this? Yeah. Can you feel this? Yeah. 